Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing the volcanic eruption of 2022 once again. And even though most of you have probably already seen a lot of different images and have heard a lot about it, I wanted to kind of summarize a lot of the things we've discovered about this eruption in the last few days, and talk a little bit more about the reasons why it happened, what we think might happen next, and the general effect this might have on the planet in the next few years. But before I start, and because some of you might not make it to the end of the video, I really wanted to highlight where a lot of the money from this video and from the last few videos is going to be going to, and how you can help as well. There's at least one registered cherry that's currently raising money with an active track record of helping Tonga in a lot of different ways, and there are at least two fundraisers by famous athletes from Tonga, both of which can be found on GoFundMe.com and the links for which are in the description below, that are essentially trying to raise money to help the people in need now, because the actual effects from the tsunami were financially a lot more devastating than we originally thought. And all of this becomes apparent if you look at some of the before and after satellite photos, some which you can also find in the description below in the article from the BBC, that show us how completely devastated the region looks like now, both because of the ashfall, with the ashfall referring to that effect of ash falling from the skies from the volcanic eruption, making some of the islands look completely different from how they used to look. But also the effects from the tsunami that completely devastated some of the islands that did not have a lot of elevation. But because the communication with the islands are, have still not really been restored completely, I think we all kind of owe to the Tongan community to essentially help them financially. And so you can either do this by clicking the button below or by going directly to the charities in the description and donating through there as well. And by the way, all of the money is going to that particular charity right here. And with all of this out of the way, well, okay, so the volcano itself, what are its origins? And to understand this, well, let's start with the Google Earth topography map that shows us the layout of two continental plates interacting with one another. On the west side, we have the Australian plate that connects Australia, New Zealand, and a lot of other islands. And on the east side right here, we have the Pacific plate. And as you can kind of see, they interact right along this line. And this huge trench is where one of these plates is going under the other plate. We usually refer to this as the subduction zone. And as one of the plates starts to descend deeper and deeper into the earth itself, a lot of different sediments and a lot of different materials starts to melt right here and slowly rises to the top, creating various volcanic ranges, usually a few hundred kilometers away from the oceanic trench. And you can see all of this on this map. So we have a lot of these volcanoes in New Zealand, with more and more of them along the line right here going north. And as you kind of ascend to the north, you'll eventually come upon this area that seems to have a slightly higher concentration of the volcanoes, with a lot of them still not actually having any name. Mostly because, if you look at their picture, they're basically just completely brand new. They haven't even formed an island yet. And this series of islands, this is the Kingdom of Tonga, produced in a very similar manner from ancient volcanoes, where these volcanoes created the islands. And right here, right next to it, you can see the volcano we're talking about. Honga Tonga Honga Hapai, with a few more of these volcanoes located in this region as well. And if we zoom in here, you'll notice that this is a pretty large mountain, with the top of this essentially representing a somewhat ancient volcanic caldera. In reality, it sort of looks like this. And this caldera was created by a really massive eruption approximately a thousand years ago, most likely around the year 1100. Now, the volcano itself is pretty big. It's approximately 20 kilometers wide and approximately 1800 meters in height. But up until the year 1912, it was a dormant volcano. Not much was going on here. And so back in 1912, this is when the first eruptions started to occur, with these early eruptions creating the two islands, one located right here and another one right here. With the initial eruptions also being pretty powerful, building up the island to the height of about 114 meters. With both islands also being pretty long as well, approximately 2 kilometers in length. Then new eruptions started happening in December of 2014, eventually connecting these two islands with a relatively large cone that you can see in this picture. And so these are the images that we still have on Google Earth, taken a few months before the final eruption in 2022. Because of this extremely active island building, a lot of geologists from around the world started using this island as a kind of an academic curiosity to learn how the island building process works on the planet. You can actually find one of these articles in the description below. And even though the volcano was still relatively active and everyone was still tracking its progress, approximately a week before the eruption in 2022, the Tonga Geological Services, after observing the volcano for approximately a week, 
determined that it was most likely dormant, there was no further activity and it seemed to be sort of quieting down. So in reality nobody actually expected the volcano to suddenly become so destructive. But it wasn't until the January 14th, or a day before the final eruption, that the volcano started to spew out huge amounts of ash, with Tonga geologists going on site in order to investigate this further. And then within just a few hours of that, we get this. The largest volcanic eruption of the 21st century and the largest non-nuclear explosion in the last few decades, only dwarfed by the 1991 eruption in the Philippines the eruption of Mount Pinatubo that ended up cooling down the planet for a few years afterwards. And these extremely violent blasts caused by these eruptions are usually referred to as the Plinian eruptions, or sometimes also known as the Vesuvian eruptions after the original eruption of Vesuvius popularized by the destruction of Pompeii. Although the most famous such eruption is the one that happened in 1883 in modern Indonesia, and this was of course the eruption of Krokatoa. The eruption that has a lot of parallels with the one in Tonga. They both created huge plumes of ash, they both created an extremely loud sound heard from thousands of kilometers away, with some reports even indicating that this one was actually heard from Alaska, and they both created a tsunami wave as well. Now volcanic tsunamis are generally extremely rare. They generally only happen when there's a sudden landslide during the volcanic eruption. With these preliminary satellite photos sort of showing us the before and after picture and potentially suggesting that this entire chunk right here might have actually created the landslide which then displaced a lot of water generating the tsunami. But unlike previous eruptions including the one in the Philippines and the Krokatoa eruption, luckily for everyone this one right here was relatively quick. It only lasted for about an hour even though generally these eruptions can last up to about a day or even several days. And previously this is exactly what caused most of the damage and most of the fatalities. For example, if there is a lot of ash fall lasting for hours or even days, it can generally generate such a thick layer of ash on the ground that it ends up depositing on various roofs of various houses with the houses eventually collapsing, which is precisely what killed most of the people in the Philippines in 1991. And the effects from Ashfall are generally unpredictable and extremely devastating. Here's actually a picture from the Philippines of an airplane covered in Ashfall, with the Ashfall causing the airplane to tip on its tail. With this also generating the other unfortunate effect of poisoning the drinking water of various communities. And that's actually the biggest problem on Tonga right now. All of this ash generated by the eruption unfortunately deposited unsafe amounts of various elements, including various sulfur elements, various types of chlorides and fluorides, all of which made the water on Tonga right now completely unusable. And so lack of drinking water is just one of the many problems facing Tongans right now. Once again, check out the cherries below if you'd like to help. But because of the extremely detailed observations of this eruption, we now have a pretty good picture about what actually happens when these tremendously powerful events occur. For example, in this animation using radio frequency measurements, you can kind of see the amount of lightning strikes happening inside the ash cloud as the volcano erupted, with the estimates suggesting that there were nearly a million lightning strikes in just a few hours. On top of this, pretty much every major barometer or pressure measurement device on the planet detected what can be best described as a kind of an air tsunami, a little air pressure wave that traveled across the planet and was detected on every continent. Here's one of many visualizations showing us how first the pressure wave traveled to the east and then it returned rebounded going to the west, with the pressure wave here creating the change in pressure by approximately 1%, or close to about 0.7% actually. So not enough for us to feel, but enough for us to measure using barometers. And considering that the sound from this explosion and the actual shockwave, as I mentioned, was heard all the way in Alaska, 9,000 kilometers away, none of this should really come as a surprise. But apart from the tsunami that it generated that traveled across the world, and apart from the ash fall, the other effect here is more long term. This also obviously released a lot of the material into the upper atmosphere. And in the past, a lot of these similar volcanic eruptions usually resulted in the overall cooling of the planet for at least a few years. At the moment, the preliminary calculations suggest that approximately 400,000 tons of sulfur dioxide was released as a result of the eruption. And if correct, this suggests that the effects will probably only be limited to the southern hemisphere, with the overall cooling expected to be approximately 0.5 degrees and lasting for maybe a couple of years from now. But this will become a little bit more clear in the next few months especially as scientists get to measure some of the concentrations in the upper stratosphere. 
Interestingly, this might also cause some really spectacular sunsets in the next few months, especially in the Southern Hemisphere. And here I wanted to show you the iconic painting, the screen, that's sort of believed to have been inspired by some sort of volcanic cooling event that happened around the time when the original painting was created. But I guess the other more important question is, well, is it over? Is this basically the end and is this the final culmination of all of these mini eruptions? And this is of course the tricky part. Since the scientists have already established that these massive eruptions happen approximately every thousand years here, the worst for Tonga might have already occurred. But the thing is, some additional smaller eruptions have already been happening even now, actually just a few hours ago. And so in reality there could be months or even years of different types of volcanic eruptions, and because some more instability was just created by this eruption, some other parts of the volcano could collapse, creating another tsunami. And so because of this, this particular volcano will have to be observed for at least a few months and actively monitored in order to prevent any further disasters. But the major volcanic eruption is most likely behind us. And that's because the biggest magma chamber that was inside the volcano has already exploded creating what we observed on January 15. And that's basically when a lot of water suddenly rushes inside, mixes with magma and starts producing these massive explosions that last for several hours. And so watching out for further eruptions and potentially other instabilities causing more tsunamis is basically going to be the priority for the next few years. Well, so for now, that's kind of all I wanted to mention. I'm sure there will be more updates and more things we'll learn about this because this is definitely one of the most spectacular and most well-documented volcanic eruption that we've ever observed. But at the same time, it's also important that people were also affected by this and a lot of people currently need our help. And so despite the fact that this was visually spectacular, it's important to remember that someone out there currently probably has no home and nothing to eat. So check out those charities in the description and well on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who wants to learn about space and sciences and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow, stay wonderful and as always, bye bye.